Hello, my friends. I'm Laura Adams, an author, speaker, and consumer advocate. I've been writing and hosting Money Girl since 2008, and I am so glad you are here with me today. This week, I'm pulling a show out of the archive for you that I also need to hear. Have you noticed how everything seems to be on sale right now? I'm getting bombarded with emails from all my favorite stores about sales. You could go broke saving so much money. As we spend more time at home due to the pandemic, I think it's a little easier to be tempted by online sales, almost as a form of entertainment. So this show is packed with very actionable tips about how to pull back and avoid those impulse purchases. Please enjoy it, and I'll be back next week with a new show. Okay, on to today's show called 14 Tips to Stop Impulse Buying and Save Money, which is episode number 528. No matter how frugal you are, no one is immune from making impulse purchases from time to time. And this is such an important topic because the more you give in to those impulses, the more harmful it can be to your financial life. Overspending is a common barrier to achieving key financial goals, whatever your goals may be, whether you're trying to save 15% of your income for retirement, or maybe you're really trying to build your emergency fund from scratch. Whatever your goals are, they typically entail carving out more of your budget to go toward that goal. And if you're caught in a cycle of bad spending behavior, that can really get between you and your goal. So in a lot of cases, controlling those spending impulses can be the key that allow you to have more money to actually achieve what you want. So in many cases, getting a grip on how you spend money that makes all the difference and whether you can achieve your goals or not. So I think that the tips in today's show will give you some ideas about ways to really kind of rein in your spending, ways to think about spending in a more mindful way. You probably won't be able to use all of the tips, but if just one of them helps you think more carefully the next time you spend, maybe prevents you from buying something that you really didn't need, then I will consider my mission here accomplished. Instead of caving into impulses, I want you to develop strategies that stand in the way between the compulsion to spend and actually spending. If you can put more time between that impulse and actually doing the thing that you don't want to do, a lot of times that's what allows your brain to kind of settle down and realize, ah, this is just an impulse. This is not something I really want to do. And just about all of these are tips that I personally use to help myself slow down, stay more mindful, stay more in the moment when it comes to spending so I don't let myself get out of control or find myself regretting a purchase that I really didn't need in the first place. So let's get into it. I'm going to cover 14 tips and tricks to resist bad spending habits so you can save more money. So the first tip that I use is shop with a list. I don't care if you're shopping for groceries, holiday gifts, or even clothes. If you have a list of what you really need to buy, challenge yourself to stick to the list. I mean, you're always going to find something that you didn't know you wanted, right? Whether it's Oreos in the grocery store or designer shoes that are on sale, we can always find things to buy. And just because you find something that looks great or is on sale doesn't mean you need to buy it. So keep a list of things that you really truly need, cultivate that list over time, and use that as your shopping plan to stay focused. So this can work whether you're shopping online or you're in a retail store. It can really help you become less distracted by anything that's not on the list and help you put in the cart just the things you need, check out, and move on. Tip number two, Use a waiting period rule. This is one I implement all the time. So create a rule that before buying anything over a certain amount, maybe for you it's $25 or $100, some amount that you'll give yourself time to think about it. And that time period could range from an hour to a month depending on your propensity to splurge. But certainly, the longer you can wait, the longer you can procrastinate purchasing something, the better, because the more likely you won't do it. 
A good rule of thumb is to give yourself at least 24 hours to decide if buying something is a need or if it's just a random impulse purchase. That 24 hours gives you time to, quote, sleep on it. And I think that really does allow your mind to refresh and reset about the purchase. It allows enough time for your impulse to settle down so you can approach the purchase with a clear mind if you really do need something. If you're shopping in a brick and mortar store and find something that you think you can't live without, try taking a picture of it and take a picture of the price as well. Go home and then you can revisit the item after the waiting period has expired and even use the information to do comparison shopping online. And let's say you're shopping locally, or maybe you're on vacation and you're shopping, or you're downtown Main Street shopping, and you see something that you don't believe that you could buy later online, get the information from the shop owner. Get the card with the phone number and the name of the person that you could get back to later on if you do want to buy it. So don't feel like you have to buy something just because you're in a local store. You can certainly revisit that purchase as well after the waiting period. Tip number three, calculate an item's value in time. This is a big one, especially when you're first starting out, maybe you're not making a lot of money. Since a spending impulse is often emotional, if you can engage the logical part of your brain, that's a powerful way to stop the impulse. So one tactic that I have often used is to think about how much time it would take you to earn what an item costs. For example, If you earn $25 an hour after taxes, buying a $250 suit costs you 10 hours of work. So is it worth the equivalent of a long work day? Now, only you can decide the answer to that question. But being a more logical shopper can instantly change your mindset so you think more rationally and you put the brakes on a spending impulse. Tip number four. Don't buy anything that cannot be returned. Sometimes the most tempting purchases are the ones that you can't return. Maybe it's a super low final clearance price that's online and you think, wow, that's just too good to pass up. But sometimes there's a reason that a markdown item is marked down and and marked down so much because it hasn't sold very well. Like maybe it doesn't fit well if it's clothing or maybe it's different from the picture. We've all experienced how terrible it is to regret buying something that you can't return. At least buying something you regret that you can return allows you to undo the damage once you come to your senses. So make a pact with yourself that you're not going to buy anything that's on final markdown clearance unless you are just 100% sure that it's something you need and it is on your list of things that you need. Tip number five. Reevaluate what you already own. If you're a compulsive shopper, you probably have a lot of stuff, like a closet full of clothes or maybe a garage full of gadgets that you rarely use. So instead of buying the next item that you probably don't need, reevaluate what you already have. Sometimes paring down what you have is actually the key to figuring out what you really use so you can find more satisfaction in those things instead of accumulating more things. And I'm a big believer in buying fewer but better quality things. Another strategy is to organize your belongings in better ways so that it's just easier to see what you have. I really enjoyed arranging my closet and my kitchen using the method that's made famous by Marie Kondo. If you haven't heard of her, she's a really interesting Japanese organization professional, and her techniques and mindset for approaching clutter have become a global phenomenon. So you might want to check out a couple of her best-selling books. One is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and the other is Spark Joy, which is kind of a companion to the first one. Either one of them are fantastic, and I'll put links to these books in the notes for the show on the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Tip number six, plan your splurges. If you're exceptionally prone to impulse purchases, Trying to eliminate them altogether may be pointless. Instead, give yourself permission to make smaller purchases 
on a regular basis. If you plan for, let's say, one new inexpensive item a month or a relatively expensive treat once a quarter, that can keep you from random binge buying. Setting aside a small amount of your budget as an impulse fund can give you a manageable and responsible outlet for spontaneous purchases. Tip number seven, give yourself a no spending challenge. Set up a personal challenge that cuts impulse spending over a set amount of time. For instance, you might only buy essentials for an entire month. So essentials could be groceries, housing, utilities, and insurance, those sorts of things. Only those for an entire month and cut out everything else that's frivolous or unnecessary. You might cook at home every day for a month instead of eating out. You might not buy any new clothes for 60 days, or you might wait 24 hours before buying anything more expensive than a certain dollar amount. That's the waiting period that I previously mentioned. Turning no spending days into a game can make them easier to sustain, and they really do help you clearly identify what your spending triggers are, such as surfing the web for clothes or dining out too frequently. Once you figure out what you're doing that is making your impulse purchasing possible, you can be specific about cutting back that activity. And if cutting all frivolous spending is just too intense, consider identifying categories that cause trouble, such as shoes or expensive cocktails and cut those out during a period of time. Plan the best ways possible, such as cutting back on surfing the web or doing any window shopping. Also, put reminders of your challenge in strategic places, like a sticky note in your wallet or on your credit cards. And if you slip up, just resume the challenge right away. You might even impose a good cause penalty. So if you slip up, maybe you do something like match any slip-ups as donations to your favorite charity. Okay, back to tips to kill your impulse spending. Number eight, unsubscribe from retail newsletters. The next time you see a retail letter in your email inbox with a tempting promotion or sale, Look for the unsubscribe link at the bottom and break the cycle. Something you just happen to see on sale that you don't really need doesn't save you money. It just hurts your financial life. So what's out of sight will be out of mind. So get rid of those email newsletters that seem to tempt you. That's one less way to spend money compulsively. Number nine, only shop with a clear head. This is really important. Be sure to notice when and why you make impulse purchases. Are you sad, stressed, tired, tipsy, or all of the above? You've probably heard the term retail therapy. Don't do that, guys. There are many better ways to ease stress that do not involve spending money. Even just being tired or hungry when you're shopping can be dangerous. Instead of thinking about a purchase logically, you just end up loading up your cart and buying. So consider putting off shopping until another day when you're more rested and you don't have a grumbling stomach. Spending to boost your mood might work in the moment, but it really hurts you in the long run. It can lead to a vicious cycle where you're upset or stressed and you buy something impulsively. And then you get stressed more because you just bought something impulsively. So don't give in to that. Shopping in the evening can be a particularly bad time to make decisions if you're home alone, you're bored, or maybe a little impaired after a few glasses of wine. So remember never to shop when you're restless or you're having a bad day. Instead, call a friend, go for a walk, or take a hot bubble bath to cheer yourself up. Tip number 10, never shop for entertainment. If hitting the mall or Main Street shopping is hurting your finances, change your idea of entertainment. When you put yourself in the center of shopping temptations, you're probably going to buy something. So stay away from outlets or your favorite stores when you've got time to kill and you need to curb impulse buying. And don't hang out with friends whose lives revolve around shopping when it just isn't in your budget. When you really need something, take that list and go shopping alone. It can be a more mindful experience that keeps you more in control 
keeps you calm compared to the chaos of shopping with friends or kids. Tip number 11, read the reviews. The next time you're tempted to buy something, read all the product reviews you can, especially the bad ones. Oftentimes, those bad reviews are exaggerated claims, but sometimes they show you the truth about the bad side of a product that may make you realize that it's not worth buying. Tip number 12, minimize the damage. When you find yourself in a situation where you're about to give in to a buying impulse online, try putting the item in your cart, but then leave the site. In some cases, choosing the product may be enough to satisfy your urge to shop, even if you don't go through with the purchase. Now, if you're in a store and you feel like you're overcome with the desire to buy lots of stuff, consider taking one inexpensive item to the checkout and then get out of the store with minimal financial damage. That's not an ideal habit to follow, but stopping while you're ahead may be a way to ease away from shopaholic tendencies. Tip number 13, think about the last purchase you regret. Before you pull the trigger on your next shopping impulse, think about the last time you made a buying decision that you still regret. That may reveal a pattern in your behavior that you want to squelch. Decide that you will not let yourself make another bad impulse purchase today that you'll be sorry about in the future. Tip number 14, remember your goals. The idea behind curbing impulse spending is so you can use that money to achieve your most cherished financial goals instead. So write down your goals and keep them in strategic places that you can't avoid if you choose the wrong path. For instance, you might use a black Sharpie pen to write your goal on your debit and your credit cards. You might put it on a sticky note or a laminated card for your refrigerator, your desk at work, your bathroom mirror inside your wallet. Use it as a screensaver for your mobile devices and computers creating visible triggers that prompt you to think about what you want to accomplish can be a powerful way to sidestep destructive financial behavior. Any strategy you can use to keep your goals top of mind will help you focus on what's most important and reinforce your commitments. Your goals will guide your behavior, but only if you remember them. The best way to resist any impulse is to put time between the impulse and the action. So the more time you give yourself to settle down, remember your goals, and reconsider the purchase, the easier it becomes to resist. If you have a money question or a dilemma, a great way to keep the conversation going is with a terrific community. Join my private Facebook group called Dominate Your Dollars. It's filled with some amazing people who are posing questions, answering questions, and really getting some good conversation going. I love to see it. To request your invitation to the group, you can visit Dominate Your Dollars on Facebook, or you can send me a text message for immediate access. Just text the word dollars, D-O-L-L-A-R-S, to the number 33444. I hope to see you in the group. You can also visit lauradadams.com to email me your money question, or you can even record a voice message that I may be able to use in the show. Call 302-364-0308 to leave your message. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week. Until then, here's to living a richer life. Money Girl is produced by the audio wizard Steve Rickyberg with editorial support from Karen Hertzberg. If you've been enjoying the podcast, please rate and review it on Apple Podcasts. You guys have been sending in some fantastic reviews. Please keep them coming. It's an easy, free way to give back, show your support, and help new listeners find us. You might also like the backlist episodes and show notes that are always available at quickanddirtytips.com. 